Hi, you're here with Maria. When I decided to start making videos about gin, I asked my regular YouTube watchers uh, the type of things that they might like to hear about. One request that I had was to talk about the gins in my, in my gin cabinet. I thought it'd be a really great start to this series of videos to talk about a woman in the gin industry. Now, anybody who knows anything about gin in the UK will know the name Joanne Moore. And Joanne Moore uh, was the first woman to be named as master distiller. And the reason why I want to talk about Joanne Moore is because she is the woman behind one of my favorite gins, which is this one, Opia Gin. It was a gin that I know I discovered early on. It's quite a local to me gin described as being located between Warrington and Manchester. It has the bonus of also being distilled by Joanne Moore, the seventh master distiller of G&J Distillers, which is England's oldest distillery, being around since 1761 and using the London Dry method to distill its gins. I'll tell you a little bit more about Opia in a minute, but I wanted to talk a little bit about Joanne Moore. She trained as a biochemist and went to work at what was then G&J Grenells in 1996 in the quality control labs but while working alongside their sixth master distiller she discovered a talent for creating gins. When their master distiller retired in 2006 Joanne was appointed as the first female master distiller. Joanne went on to create her own gin called Bloom which bears her name and she has also developed gins like Berkeley Square and Thomas Dakin and my favourite, Opia. So it is an honour to recognise an incredible woman who has taken up such a prominent position in the gin industry. So what can I tell you about Opia? So if you imagine the journey of Opia and the spices and botanicals used being along the spice route, starting first in Malaysia to take on the Cuba peppers. Next we head off to India's south coast, the Telly Cherry peppers, as well as cardamom. Then we set sail to Turkey. The botanical that brings the spiciness to Opia, spicy cumin seeds are added. According to their website, which I must say, if you've not actually ventured onto, do because they take you on a really lovely little journey of the history of Opia and where the spices come from. In fact, I don't think I've ever been on a gin website quite as lovely as this one in terms of the way it conveys information to you. So from the story as it is told is that in Venice the juniper boards the ships uh, to sail on the journey stopping next in Morocco where coriander is added. This brings the fresh and zesty note to Opia with the last stop before England being Spain where we take on a cargo of Spanish oranges before heading back to England. The G and J distillers where Joanne Moore is going to craft us this beautiful gin. Welcome to my kitchen. I have two ways for you today of enjoying Opia gin. One is my go-to garnish and the other is one that I haven't tried before so I thought that that might be a nice thing to do to tell you about how I normally drink it and a way that I have never had it before. So firstly it's Friday night. We often do pizza night in our house on Friday. If I'm going to enjoy an Opia gin with my pizza, then I'm going to have it with chili and coriander. So I'm just going to pick, I've washed the coriander. I'm just gonna pick some leaves off, put it in there. Like I'm not going to shred it or do anything unusual to it. I just straight like that. I'm going to cut off a couple of circles of chili, place that in also. Let's not put the seeds in there if we can help it. There we go. Going to put in my dollop of gin. Probably my downfall is that I don't use a measure. <laughs> and then I'm going to use tonic water. Now I haven't gone out and bought anything special to do this. This is what I've got in the house, which is Tesco Finest Tonic Water, which to be honest, I find to be a completely decent tonic water for you know, day-to-day -day use. I do often buy Fentimans, I do often buy Fever Tree as like an everyday tonic water. I think this is pretty decent actually. So I'm gonna put that in. I'm not gonna do too much because we still want to taste our gin. And there you have it, you're raring to go. I like a lot of ice in my gin. I like 
I like the Spanish style of enjoying a gin and tonic. It just seems to suit me. Chin chin. Oh, that's fat. I love that. This is my... I love this on a Friday night with pizza. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay, secondly is a way, I, as I said, I've not had opia before. I've got some lime juice here. I'm going to pour that in. Put our opia in first. Mother's Day is around the corner, kids, if you want to buy me a measure. A metal one, please. The uh, writing wore off the glass one last time. <laughs> Got to put that out there. Then we're going to open our ginger ginger beer. And it's said to garnish it with a half of chilli. So there we go. We throw that in there. We give it a swish around. Yeah, I don't remember ever tasting over here with ginger beer. But anyway, I'm open to it. Mmm. Okay. I can see that being a really great winter warmer, actually. The first thing you get, as you know, as goes in is that <gasps> the ginger beer in your throat. <laughs> And then with the peppery undertones of the opia, that combines really nicely. I don't know that I'm going to give this one up just yet, but this is a great variation. So how do you like to drink opia? Do you like to drink opia? Have you got a new gin that you think that I should try? How about you leave me a comment? If you like the video, give me a big thumbs up. Let's start a dialogue about your gin journey this week as well. So International Women's Day. Celebration of Joanne Moore and the wonderful legacy she's leaving within the gin industry. As is said in Australia, have a good weekend. We'll see you next Friday night with another gin. Chin chin.